Now let's look at calculating CGPA. My name is Paul Ludo, and today we'll be looking at calculation of CGPA. Most people don't know how to calculate CGPA. Now I said something about the farm that you have to get a, a particular minimum amount of CGPA before you can actually go to the next level, notwithstanding if you've passed all your courses or not. So let's calculate, let's look at how you calculate CGPA. In year one in pharmacy, you'll be offering general math one, which is called math one one one, algebra and trigonometry, math one two one, general math two, calculus, physics one one one, physical physics for life sciences, physics one nine one, practical physics, physics one o one, basic principle of chemistry, chemistry one seven one, basic practical chemistry bar 151 general biology 1 gst 101 use of english 1 gst 103 social sciences 1 now each of these subjects each of these courses have their own credit units and math 111 have a credit unit of 3 math 121 have a credit unit of 3 physics 111 have a credit unit of 2 um, Physics 191 have a credit unit of 2. Physics um, Chem 101 have a credit unit of 2. Chem 171 have a credit unit of 2. Bar 151 have a credit unit of 3. GST 101 have a credit unit of 2. GST 103 have a credit unit of 2. Now, this credit unit implies it is actually associated with the number of hours that you spend in classes okay so for instance math 101 that have a credit unit of three you spend three hours in, in class every week you get that is how they calculate credit hours so the three credit hours is the number of hours spent on that subject on that course per week and the higher the time you spend and um, learning that course there's more likelihood that that subject will be harder than the one that you spend less hour studying it in the other week, for instance, GST 101, which has a credit unit of 2, it is most likely that Math 111 will be more difficult than GST 101. Okay, so that is what a credit unit means the number of hours that you spend studying those courses in class per week. Now, now, now look at the grade unit. Okay, now for you to score A, which is 5 points, okay, A is 5 points, B is 4 points. C is three points now for pharmacy that's where it stops three points because you cannot get less than C for you to study either B farm or D farm but for other department I think there's a D but I think most university have counseled D so for today we'll look at A B and C okay let's look at A B and C because I'm sure that nobody wants to have a D let's look at A B and C okay so A is five points B is four points C is three points so that is the grade okay so what score do you need to have for you to have a you need to score from 70 to 100 for you to have a grade of a for a grade of b you need to score between 60 and 69 for you to have a grade of b for you to have a grade of c you have to score between 50 and 59 for you to have a grade of c so whatever happens pharmacy students student that wants to graduate with good result please don't 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 please don't put your pace below 50 so that at least even if you don't come out first class if you don't come out with cgp of 5.0 you probably come out with a cgpa that is um, strong enough to give you a tangible job if you understand what i mean so that is for the grade so we are going to look at this table in course code um, credit unit grade let's move now for instance you have these scores and you have these points in your results like 80 in math 75 in biology approximately you have all A's 70 and above this is how you calculate your cgpa now the great scale is for five points each because a is five points now if you have a b that is four points if you have a c that is three points so you can add you can use you can use the formula right 
So in each, each of these ones that are A is all true, you have a point, a great scale of 5, each of them. Now, you multiply the great scale by the credit unit. Now, for instance, the credit unit of MAT101 or MAT111 is 3. So you multiply 5 times 3, you get 15. You go ahead and multiply the rest, you have this result that is displayed on the screen. Now, after having that, you now add up all the credit units. You have 21 credit units, okay? If you add everything, 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2, plus 2, plus 2 you have a credit unit of 21. Now, if you have, if you add your, your cumulative um, grade score and credit unit, you have a GSCU of 105. Now, that is the total now, that is the total, that is the sum of the total of your grade score, grade scale and your cumulative and your credit unit. Now, for you to calculate your CGPA, you will now say your GSCU, which is your grade score times your uh, cumulative frequency, <laughs> it is your grade score times your credit unit divided by your credit unit, which you now have 105 divided by 21. You now find out that people that actually have a parallel will come up with a CGPA of 5.0. So if you have every other, just try it with every other. Um, now, in second semester, you are exposed to physics 114, which has a credit unit of 2. You are exposed to physics 103, credit unit of 2. You are 111, credit unit of 2. You are 121, credit unit of 2 by 152, credit unit of 3 by 154, credit unit of 2, GST 102, credit unit of 2, GST 104, credit unit of 2. And the total accumulation, accumulative credit unit for second semester is 17, okay? So try to do the calculation and what you probably think, just put any credit unit between A, B, or C. Please don't put D because what the man have in his heart, so is he. So if you put D, which means you're a D person, and I, I rebuke a D person in your life in Jesus' name. So as you're coming to university, just know that just aim at A and B, okay? A, I, a is hard though, I must tell you, it's difficult to have an A, but I think from your preparation and your mindset, you can have an A. Okay, people get A, no be two heads then get you get if somebody can have an A in a particular course, then there's a big chance that you can have an A too. I'm not saying it's simple. It is difficult. School is difficult. Even from entry from your jam, jam is difficult. Your position E is difficult. So now that you've gotten admission or people done that you're planning to get admission, you have to realize that school is not easy. Okay. Having a CGPA of 4.5 is a big one because that is the CGPA for first class students, okay? So, thank you for watching. I hope I've been able to explain how to calculate the CGPA in, in, in you can use your own faculty and this thing. Just look for the credit unit of each course that you're offering and then this, the scale is the same, the grade is the same. If you have an, if you have 70 and above, it's always A for all the universities in, I think, in Nigeria. I don't know about other countries because I have not been to other countries. If you have a particular, you have C, you have this particular one, you have uh, B. So use your own faculty, your own departmental course and calculate so that you can know your CGPA. And you should always try to maintain a CGPA that will keep you above 3.5. For the first class people, first class is between 4.5 to 5.0. Second class is 3.5 to 4.49. Okay? Second class that is second class upper. So second class lower is 2.49 to 3.49. Third class is 1.5, 1.50 to 2.49. Now there is good academic standing. Now if you have a CGPA of 1.00, you are considered and above, you are considered to have a good academic standing. So you can actually continue your schooling till you graduate. But if you come below 1.00 CGPA, you are below good academic standing and you'll be required to withdraw from school. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe. Thank you for watching and I appreciate with all of my heart.
and I'll see you in the next video.